Hello and welcome to the Real Estate Nerds Podcast. On this Best Deal episode, we will explore the human side of real estate investing with a seasoned pro about the legendary best deal of their life. A deal isn't just the investment, it is also the person executing it. Stay with us and learn what it takes to be the best investor possible. Hi, and welcome to the Real Estate Nerds Podcast. I'm your host, Scott Royal-Smith, owner of Royal Legal Solutions, your home for everything tax, business, and legal for real estate investors. Uh, I got my good friend here, Jacob, here today. Um, Jacob's got a wild story for us, uh, so I'm really stoked to jump into it. Um, Jacob, why don't you take it away? Fill us in on what we need to know about you um, as it relates to the story you're going to share with us today. Hey, yeah, awesome. Well, thanks for having me on, Scott. Hey, everyone. My name is Jacob Ayers. As you can tell, if you're watching this video, I'm a relatively young guy. I'm 28 years old. I got started investing in real estate when I was 25, but taking it back way further than then. Uh, Scott, like many of your audience members out there, I was kind of born and raised with this blueprint, and that is go to school, get a good education, further that education, go to college, study in something hard, kind of like you did, Scott, I know you're an attorney, and eventually get a good job. And so I did all that and I found myself in my early to mid 20s in corporate America. And up to this point, I'd always had something to strive for, something next, you know, a mark to make in school, a grade to make, some kind of achievement, some kind of stepping stone. And all of a sudden here I was, corporate America. And the next step I could really see was retirement. And I was like, well, I mean, that doesn't really sit well with me. I know there's something else out there that I can do. So nope, I had all this like free time on my hands. Of hard work, <laughs> grind it away, and then you just get the golden dream of diapers and strollers. Fair oh, now. yeah, exactly. And, uh, you know, it's <laughs> all until retirement. No one yeah. enjoy life now. Don't, don't do it. I know it's crazy, right? I think we're all kind of raised with that mentality. But anyway, sorry to jump in. No, um, no, that's, that's good. There, but like, I think you're right. You know, and like, I think that's when you find like younger guys that are, uh, like us, I'm pretty close to, you know, our, we're in the same age bracket of sorts um, that like, it's like the disillusionment of like what we were told life was supposed to be. And then we got out there like, nope, that is not nearly as cool as everybody told me it's supposed to be. I need something more. I need something different. And, and that's kind of like where you led to with your next your journey, right? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So, you know, here I am in corporate America, like, you know, what's next retirement. So just kick my feet up. And like you've said, you know, wait for 40 years before I do anything else. And I was, you know, it just didn't sit well with me. So I knew there was, you know, more out there that I could do more that I wanted. I had all this free time on my hands. People always complain like, oh, I don't have time for this or I don't have time for that. But when you really sit down and audit your time and figure out what you're doing, you've got a lot of time to, you know, do things with. It's just what you make time for. So me, I was really interested in at this point in my life, about 23, 24 years old and I like personal finance and investing it was kind of a new world to me I had a little bit of money now you know I had a big boy job and you know time to like get my act together and so uh you know I started researching you know about personal finance and investing and I went down this rabbit hole and what I found is you know you start going down this path and there's kind of a, a natural fork in the road and on one side you've got investing and you know your more traditional sense through your retirement accounts 401ks IRAs through asset classes like stocks bonds mutual funds etc and then on the other fork of the road, you've got more uh, alternative asset classes like real estate investing. And that's what really appealed to me. So I just kind of went down that path and ran with it and just dove into this world. And, you know, you get online and, you know, there's just all kinds of resources out there and books and podcasts like this one. And uh, yeah, so next thing I know, I've uh, bought my very first rental property and it's kind of led me to where I'm at today. That's awesome, Jacob. Uh, yeah, I think you're right, man. There's just something in there. I just heard you say that about like there's a, like, this natural fork in the road. And the one thing that was like kicking in my head right now is like I was wondering about like is um, is that like different kinds of people like the some people that want the real safety security of like I clock in I clock out I do my job I don't get fired I invest in my retirement account and then I'm good like I want that bubble of safety and then there's these other people that are like you know what like I have to be doing more you know and those are the people that like strike out on their own or like I'm gonna figure out how to do real estate investing because it's not easy to just jump into it. And I have to do more than just like go to my job. I actually need this whole other set of like risks and excitement and the ability to get the payoff and the freedom that I can get from that. 
I wonder if that's like fundamental to like people, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Interesting point. I don't know. You know, maybe some people are just wired for one path or the other, you know, maybe it comes down to, you know, people's inherent, like, you know, risk profile or, you know, maybe, maybe there are reasons why is, you know, something I like to talk a lot about. So yeah, I don't know. It's interesting. And I don't have the answers. <laughs> yeah. I don't either, man, but there seems to be a difference. Like when you talk to people that are like entrepreneurs or people that are striking out of their own, like, yeah, like there's something different about like inside of them, you know. Yeah, like, it you seems don't like it, the right way, you know. Like you're a little bit broken. You don't, <laughs> you're not well, you've gonna got a little. To, you have to live outside of that. Sure, you've got to be a little bit crazy and are a little bit different to you know go down this path. And uh, yeah, it's it's interesting, but uh, you know it works for me, and I. I uh, I'm still doing this on the side, Scott. So, you know, I still have a full-time job as an engineer. So, you know, I went to university and you know, got an engineering degree, dove into the corporate world of engineering where I'm still at today. So, you know, I still like that, but I just found like, you know, I had all this extra time to do stuff. And so real estate investing has kind of been my side hustle for the past, you know, four or so years, maybe less than that. So, yeah. Cool. Yeah, that's what's up, man. And that's super respectable too, right? Like, I think it's a really awesome way of like work your job, have like the safety of like knowing where you're going to get paid and where you're going to eat next. Like there's no need to jump into something where you got to be like, yeah, if it doesn't work out this month, I'm underneath the bridge. (laughs) That's totally not necessary to be successful. You know, like there's like, I think so you're a good testament to that. I think about like how, how you can approach it a little bit different. Cause some people want to say that like risks are like, if it works out, um, then like, I'm going to be like amazingly well. And if it doesn't work out, everything is going to fall apart. The reality is like, there's this like middle ground of risk where you can be like, what's my worst case scenario if this doesn't go, if it doesn't go well. And for you, that's like, I still go to work on Monday and like right. I get to try again and I get, you know, I build up some more capital and then I try again, whatever you can do that. Right. So like for you, it's like easy in a lot of ways, right? Because your downside is, okay, I lost some money, but life still goes on and I'm still cool. Yeah, it allows you to kind of throw those Hail Marys over there on the side, you know, and, uh, you know, be a little bit more risky if you, you know, you've kind of got that safety net of your nine to five in the background. So yeah, definitely so. And I think it's a good point. You know, there's paths that work for everybody. Some people, you know, want to burn the ships and go all in. Some people never even t- dip their toes in the water. And other people find that middle ground. So, you know, going back to how people are wired, I guess, you know, just kind of came down to, you know, what fit me. So. That's cool. And Jacob, you're pulling together like a community of people that listen to you, right? About like how, you know, how to operate in this kind of way, right? Of like, there's this kind of like way to have like a balance between your work and your real estate. And how can you do that even while you're, you know, relatively young? Yeah, that's right. And, you know, I think, uh, you know, I started doing things when I was kind of relatively young and I, I saw that a lot of people were coming to me and asking me, you know, and mostly coming to me with their fears, like, aren't you afraid this will go wrong? Or what about this? Or how are you doing that? Mostly around real estate investing. And uh, so I decided I'd start a podcast to kind of answer all these questions at once, you know, just put some content out there. And really, you know, I, uh, I'm pretty passionate about, you know, telling people about the benefits of real estate investing, and you know, a life they can build by, by, investing in cash flowing real estate, you know, I think, you know, people have a, have a duty to themselves to, you know, chase their passions. And I just think that real estate investing is a vehicle that allows you to do that. I don't think real estate investing has to be your passion. Maybe it's furniture making, maybe it's sitting on the beach drinking mojitos, maybe it's visiting family every day, whatever it is. I just think that real estate investing gives you the ability to chase whatever that is. Yeah, I don't think I know anybody that's like, holy smokes, I really just love a house. <laughs> yeah. Like, why do you care that much about a house, bro? You only really care about what the house can get you. Right. Which is something else that's like deeper inside of us of like something else I want. Yeah, like the, those kinds of ideas too are like fundamental to money, right? It's like only, money can't really get you anything. It can only motivate you to pursue another passion of sure. something else that you can get behind, right? So like that whole dialogue was like, well, you know, I think it's actually an avenue to something else. I was like, yeah, yeah, that actually goes all the way down to like the core core of like what it is we're doing all of this for, you know? And uh, and I think that's cool, you know, like, and one of the things I want to like explore with you today is about your story, is about, you know, what is that around like your core that led you into that, into your deal that we'll be talking about here today? And like, how was it being Jacob going through that, you know, process of that deal? for you. So do you want to give us a quick recap of like what that deal looks like? 
Yeah, sure. So, uh, you know, here I am, you know, uh, 23, 24 years old in corporate America, starting to explore this world of real estate investing. I spent probably six months to a year just purely educating myself, you know, listening to podcasts online and forums, going to meetup events, reading all kinds of books, just completely dove into this world. And so I, I, uh, my very first property, I bought a property back home. So I currently live in Houston, Texas. I'm from Oklahoma. That's my home market. So I bought a property in my hometown and I might've gone wrong here. I started really small and uh, my very first property was $25,000. I know some people out there have a hard time even imagining what a $25,000 house looks like, but in all reality is not that bad. It's a house that was rent ready. You know, it was something I personally have lived in. So um, I bought this house, traditional financing, $5,000 $5,000 down, $25,000 house, rented it out. And I thought at the very least, okay, um, if, you know, if this thing goes wrong, if it, you know, it just, you know, goes completely south at the very least, it won't financially cripple me. I think my mortgage on it was, is like $140 a month. So, you know, Scott, I'm sure your cell phone bill rivals my mortgage on that very first property. So yeah, dude, well, that's awesome. And that's like the, that's an awesome way of doing it too. Right. Because in a way, like what you ended up doing right there from what I can see is that you said, like, what's the smallest possible step that I can do, like in this direction, that even if it goes totally wrong, I just can like go hustle like a the pizza delivery job a couple of nights a week. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's, up, man. that's a cool way of getting going. Yeah. So I, I knew going into it, I was going to just use it kind of as a learning experience, you know, just learn the buying process, learn how to, uh, you know, find tenants, place tenants, screen tenants, which that was a whole learning experience in itself. And, uh, you know, I had a lot of stumbles along the way and, you know, I've just treated the whole thing as like a kind of an experiment. And it was, uh, not until I got that very first rent check, Scott, that I had like this aha moment, like, so all the way up to this point, you know, it's been all in theory, sounds good on podcasts. Other people have made it work, but I wasn't sure whether it was for me, Jacob Ayer. So when I got that very first rent check, it was like, aha, you know, proof of concept moment. And I thought, okay, this is it. This feels cool. I'm just going to take this thing and do it again and again and again. And yeah, so, you know, I've kind of continue to do more deals and try to expand and grow and do larger deals and more deals. And yeah, I mean, I think it was just a great learning experience and a a great way to get your feet wet. That's awesome, Jacob. Um, Have you had any deals yet that have gone, you know, sideways on you at all? Oh man. Well, this very first deal, man, there's so many unique stories about it. Um, you know, as you can imagine what you get with a $25,000 house, um, you know, there's been just so many, so many unique things about it. So my very first tenants, um, I didn't screen them. You know, I just like, you know, put out an ad, the very first people who who came to me that were qualified with the criteria that I didn't have, you know, I let live there. So, you know, as you can imagine, that didn't turn out too well. It lasted like, you know, probably less than six months. Um, They left the house trash. I mean, they didn't damage it too much, but, you know, just left all their junk there. So I had to go in, clean it up and then try again. And every time I just got a little better and better at being a landlord and learning, you know, a little different nuances. And uh, yeah, I mean, it hasn't been a terrible deal, but uh, it's just one of those deals that I, you know, just keeps, you know, throwing me a little hurdle or a little, you know, like experiment. And uh, yeah, luckily, it's on that deal and not my other nicer, more expensive, you know, better quality properties. <laughs> yeah. So tell me about that though, because like some people, like that's two, there's two like competing things here, right? Like one is like getting into the deal and just being like, all right, cool. I'm kind of just winging it and I'll figure it out as I go along, which mm-hmm. is a little bit what that sounds like ish, right? And then oh, yeah, a little bit. people like into there that would go into say something like, um, like, uh, you should have read like XYZ books and had that all like categorized to know it would work well, blah, 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 right? So there's probably like some middle ground in there. There's probably like a sweet spot um, uh, for like how people like quote unquote, like they should do it. Yes. Right? Mm-hmm. And I'm one of these people who really wants to know all the details and have everything planned out, you know, my spreadsheets built out and everything just perfectly modeled. But I knew that that just wasn't really feasible. You know, I would never know everything before I got started with this property. So I took the plunge in and it was really scary, you know, um, buying a rental property out of state, out of your home market, no experience. It's kind of a, it's kind of a scary feeling. I have a lot of trepidation about it, but I knew I just had to pull the trigger. Yeah. But what is that about, man? Because that doesn't seem to fit you. Like you're an engineer. Here. and you're like you're spreadsheeting you know and but like it like but you didn't like for as much as you're detail oriented about like everything else on there like for tenants you're like 
I just really got to get them in. Gotta get, gotta get paid and gotta get a check. Well, you don't know what you don't know. Right. And I didn't know that, Hey, I should really have like this, uh, you know, this planned out criteria of, you know, I didn't really think that far ahead. I just thought like through the acquisition part of this. So, Hey, I finally got the deal. All the numbers work, all my financial projections, I'm going to cash flow, you know, $300 a month or whatever it is. And that all looked good on paper. Then I did. And I was like, Oh heck the people part of this. Okay. Yeah. Now yeah, I've got to figure out how to, whole people thing. now I got to figure There's out how to deal with tenants people. and manage it. <laughs> and how are they going to pay rent? You know, I just didn't make it that far. You know, I read even a lot about like tax strategies and things, you know, and corporate strategies or, you know, asset protection strategies. That is your world of things a little yeah. bit before I got into it. And yeah, I mean, it's just one of those things I knew I wasn't going to know everything. So I just figured jump into it, figure it out. It's a $25,000 house. The mortgage is 140 bucks. If you sink, you sink and you'll still be okay. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. You know, I think that's cool. Right. I think it's like one of the deals that uh, like makes it like neat, like about what you got going on though, is that, um, you know, even you didn't get caught in a system where you were going to say like, I have to know everything about everything to be able to jump in. Like yeah. what you're describing and what you're doing, Jacob is like natural entrepreneurialism. Cause it's like, I'm 80% good. And the other 20% I'll figure out on the fly. I'm just going to build in enough cushion and runway in here that I can light some shit on fire for a little while. And then I'll be like, oh, cool. But I'll figure it out as I go along and I'm going to learn it by actually doing it. So I can like ramp up quick. Yeah, so exactly. That, like, learn more in doing that property than you could have probably like in a year of like listening to more podcasts and books and whatever. Right. I, I mean, I couldn't have learned what I learned without doing it. I mean, you can only learn so much on paper and then the rest is just by doing. So yeah, I, I think a lot of like people an infinite number of these $25,000 properties to like give, like get one to every single person to be like, just start here. You know, yeah, I know, I know. Right? Yeah, people in San Francisco listening right now are probably cussing us, Scott, like there are no $25,000 properties. And yeah, I understand there's not $25,000 properties in a large portion of the markets in the US today. But there are a large amount of markets where there are cheaper and affordable properties where you most likely can invest in and get your very first deal. So, you know, I'd urge you to follow those numbers and invest where the numbers make sense and not necessarily in your home market. So, yeah, I think that's a, I think that's kind of like the mantra I really try to follow for the most part. Are you hooking people up with those kind of connects? Like, yeah, I just, of like that's what's up. That's what you're doing right now. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, a lot of my uh, inner circle of friends, you know, are always like, yo, I, I want to invest, but you know, I live in Houston or I live in Austin or I live wherever. I'm like, well, here, look, let me just show you. Okay. Let's, let's look in this market. Let's go to Oklahoma city. Hypothetically, look, here's just the MLS. Um, here, here's a $70,000 duplex. Let's run some preliminary numbers. This would cash flow you, let's say $450 a month. Boom. Right here. Like get after it. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Like, and really like, this is what's up. So you're going to do it or you're just not ready to do it. Yeah. You know, yeah. like this is it, this makes sense. Like, are you ready to do it or not? You know, cause like uh -huh. that, that whole thing about like, whether you're ready to actually do it or not. Like I, we talk about a lot and I'm from like in my circles of stuff, because like when people like the more intelligent you get, right. The more you can like try to convince yourself intellectually that something is a good idea. But like, if it's not lining up for you, like internally, of like, I think that I feel like this is a good way to move. Like you'll never move on it. Like yeah. you got to get like what's going on inside of you, right? To be like, okay, all right, cool. I'm ready to like go do it. And um, and that's one of the like the main reasons why I, like I'm a huge advocate for saying for your first deal is like try to partner with somebody. Like get somebody else that's looking at that deal with you and has like some type of skin in the game that they get paid if the deal goes well. Because now all of a sudden, like you have you know, you just bridge like a whole gap of risk, right? Like you would have had, if you had somebody else with you, like on the tenant thing, to been like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, there's people that are going to live here, right? You know, like, you know, like, yeah. Yeah. People, right. Yeah. You know, something like that. Yeah, definitely. I think uh, partnering as early on as possible is a, a brilliant idea. At least having a coach or a mentor or somebody like informally to look over your shoulder and just kind of be, you know, that uh, sounding board, that voice of reason and somebody who's done what that is that you're doing. So yeah, yeah. definitely. So it'd save you so much time and money and uh, you know, you'd save yourself a lot of mistakes. Yeah, for sure. Right. Like the, the cheapest way to do it that I've been able to find out, I was going to run this by you, see if you, see if you've ever done this before is that what I'll try to do with new deals. Um, that I'm getting into if I'm not an expert in that particular area and I'm like trying to get into it is I'll start uh, hiring people as like consultants for it. Like another attorney, a CPA, somebody that's a professional and be like, all right, here's a couple hundred bucks. I want to go through it with you for an hour. You yeah. know, and people will do that all day long. Cause they're like, Oh, 200 bucks an hour. That's great. I'll do that. But in the meantime, I didn't have to give you any equity 
And I got a professional opinion that looked over my shoulder that I got to ask questions to. Um, and I like encourage people to abuse like uh, my law firm and my company. <laughs> I, like, just, I was like, if you pay for the console, we credit it to everybody for like what it is the services they get, right? But I was like, if you just get, if you just pay for a console, you get all of the info about like making sure you don't have blind spots. Because really the stuff that would bite, bite us, right, is like when we have blind spots in areas, like with your deal, like you had a blind spot against the people. But like if mm -hmm. you can eliminate blind spots and even have awareness of the things you don't know, like you're probably already 80% good. Because just 80% of a background check on these people is like so phenomenally better than the zero, right? Yeah, any, any background check would have been better than what I did, which was nothing, so. <laughs> <laughs> That's so awesome, Jacob. Well, man, what a great story today. We always um, like to end like every episode with like a lessons learned uh, from it. So like from anybody listening to your story here today, Jacob, like what would you, you know, like to impart as like your final words of wisdom? Look, uh, I think you just have to get started, take that first step. And that first step can be big. It can be little, it can be picking up a book, going to a local real estate meetup. It can be anything. Just take that first step, literally get out there and take action, meet people, network, and just overcome that fear. Know that, you know, at the end of the day, you're going to stumble, you're going to fall, you're going to make mistakes and the sun's still going to rise the next day. So things will be okay. Just get out there and take that first step. And uh, yeah, soon enough, you'll look back and be surprised at what you've accomplished. Yeah, that's what's up, man. I mean, I got to tell you, like, listen, from your story today, it's like, um, you know, just the power of, uh, of not, I'm not like saying not allowing like no to be a position, right? Like, oh, I got a job. I don't have a lot of money. I'm too young. I'm inexperienced. I mean, like you kind of like tackled all of that shit. And we're just like, nope, I'm going to find a way. It's going to be a $25,000 house. Like I'm going to make it work. And, and I think that's like a cool spirit. If you have that kind of spirit, like you find, um, and maybe, you know, at least I found like people like that, they always win because even when they lose, they bounce back. And like, if you listen to a lot of the other people that we have here on the program from all these other, um, all these other guys that are like way more successful than, um, than me and, and, and probably, I don't know if they're more successful than you, but these, Oh, yeah, certainly. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. But, like, but they've all hit major dips, you know, uh, through it, but all of them are kind of like, you know, there's something else that's like making us all tick. That's like, all right, we're just going to go for it. And we're going to go for it again. And we're going to have a positive mindset. And we're going to keep going for it until we win. Um, and if you keep trying, you just never lose because then it's just learning, right? Like you only lose when you quit. That's when somebody's yeah. called a loser is when you stop. Yeah. Otherwise you're just learning and you're on the pathway to success and you had a dip, right? Like that's really how that game gets played. So um, anyway, Jared, awesome story, man. If people want to get a hold of you, how, uh, how, how should they reach you? Yeah. If you want to learn more about me, connect with me, talk about anything real estate. I always love talking real estate. So you can visit me at www.jacobayers.com. There you'll find all kinds of resources. My podcast called The Real Estate Way to Wealth and Freedom. So yeah, reach out to me. I'd love to talk with you. Awesome. Awesome, Jacob. Um, as everybody, I'm your host, Scott Royal Smith, owner of Royal Legal Solutions, your home for everything tax, legal, and real estate. Uh, only for real estate investors. So um, thanks everybody for tuning in and we'll catch you again soon. That's all for this best deal episode. And I'm your host, Scott Royal Smith with the Real Estate Nerds Podcast. When investments go good, they can go great. Your legendary best deal could be your next one. So keep at it. Thank you for joining us. And if you enjoyed the show, leave a review to help clue in those sleeping masses for what they need to know and what we all need reminders of. Do your good deed for the day, and I'll see you again soon.